So I'm in the presence of greatness. I'm not talking about <laughs> Craig Watson, UK sales and marketing manager. I'm talking about this bike here. It's Kawasaki's new ZX-10R. And it's got a sibling, the new ZX-10RR as well, which I've been riding this and been riding the other one all day. But while I've got Craig here, I thought I'd fire a few awkward questions his way about this bike and about the RR. So I'm gonna start off, it's got a whole new look to this bike. The aero package is something, you know, it's so blatant, it's hard to skim over it. So I wanna to talk to you firstly about, you know, why you've shaped the bike this way. And I also wanna learn why it is you haven't gone for big protruding wings over the tunnel system that you've gone for. Yeah, uh, I suppose the, the easy statement to start with on that is you can get aero and downforce by different methods. So there's internal aero and there's what are on other bikes, which is external. Now, we're fortunate with Kawasaki. Kawasaki Heavy Industries have got their own aerospace division. You know, we have built things that have gone to the moon. We kind of, you know, the, the engineers back in Japan know what they're doing. And what they've done with this is they wanted the best combination of slippery, so we can get through the air fast, but downforce. And that's why the uh, aero package, if you like, it's almost invisible. And when we uh, unveiled the very first shots look back in November, everyone went, oh, no wings. Yeah. And we had to tell the story. Yeah. The reality is, is that this bike creates 17% more downforce than the previous model. But whilst it's more downforce, we've actually made it slipperier. It gets through the air better. Okay. So essentially you can have a faster bike because it's more slippery, yeah. but you've got that downforce. And, and I guess, you know, you've been over this in the presentation with me today, mm. but the gains are that you've got more front end feel, you've got more, more front end bias, etc., and, you know, a, a better turning. That was yeah. the explanation for it. Um, but you've also, I mean, one thing to just point out while yeah. we're talking about aero are the, the channels at the, the rear of the seat. Yeah. So why have we got these in? What, how do they fit That's the slippery rather than downforce. Okay, all right. So that is to, you know, when you've seen, um, you see the guy in the wind tunnel yeah. and you've got the smoke purling going yeah, over yeah. their back. Yeah. This is to help create a smooth uh, smoke trail behind you, effectively, of air. So this, this is the big spoiler on the back of the course there, in, <laughs> as the car park. Okay, I get it now, I understand. Um, so, you know, people are gonna be wondering, why haven't you gone to a new frame? Let's start with the frame. Yep. You know, that's, that's a carryover product. Um, you know, the geometry on this bike has changed, and so I'm gonna let mm. you explain that, but why new, no new frame? because if it's not broke, don't try and fix it. What we had in the frame and the package was right. Yeah. And the changes we've made have been made because two sets of people have asked for it. Yeah. One of them's a chap called Jonathan Ray, and he kind of knows what, he do, what he's doing. Yeah. And the other is a group of people called customers. Yes, yeah. They're happy with the way the bike handles, but there's tweaks we could make that benefited both race team yeah. and real riders. You've been out today on a track that, uh, let's be blunt, it's, it's got quite a lot of car ripples yes, in it. Yeah. And so it's a little bit more like the UK roads. And what this bike is very good at, with the, the combination of both chassis and the new front and rear end um, uh, amendments we've made, yeah. is it's very compliant, it's very easy to yeah. ride. It, it is. I mean, just to go over those features. So, I mean, basically, the trail's been extended by two mil with the front forks, uh, with the front fork angle, and at the rear, the pivot point's been lowered by a mil, and the swing arm's actually been extended by eight mil. And, you know, again, that was explained, a lot of that yeah. is for stability, isn't yeah. it? I mean, to, to try and explain it in really, really simple terms, if you imagine where the top of the forks are, yeah. us moving the, the trail, for people that don't know, literally, all we've done is we've moved the top of the forks and the bottom of the forks two mil further forward. So the whole weight bias is where you put the weight through the front has changed yeah. and where we put the weight through the back has changed. So what we've not done is change the angle that the front forks are running at. Okay. The whole weight has been moved forward. And to be fair, that is something that's come from road test engineer and rider yeah. and race team. Now in Jonathan Ray's case, he can go as far or whatever as he wants because he's got a full multi-adjustable headstock. Yeah. But in road trim and don't forget super stock racing trim, yes. we can't change that. Yeah. So super stock, as this bike is now, is as you're going to race it. What we found is that with that um, uh, further forward approach, changing where the weight is, worked better in a racetrack situation and made it more composed and compliant. I mean, while we're talking about you know changes such as you know to the, the geometry, you've also changed the ergonomics on this bike. And one thing I just want to mention is again, 
to quote um, the presentation, mm. Johnny Ray has, yeah. has authorised and encouraged these changes. So the yeah. foot pegs are five mil higher and the bars are essentially set out wider. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? That it is. He's the man behind those changes. And There's three parts of it in simplistic form. If you think about, you know, when you see the triangle yeah. drawn on, so you've yeah. got where your bum is, yeah. where your hands are, yeah. but interestingly, it's where your bum can go. Right. And this is now the bump stop, and the angle that that seat runs at yeah. is like when you see the race bikes, yes. you yeah. see that hump towards the back of the yeah. seat. And it's to give you the space to get in that cutout there, yeah. to get your chin into that, get your bum back there, and with the higher screen and the protection over your shoulders that this now offers, again, a slippery um, cut through the air. And, you know, yes, Jonathan Ray has asked for these things, but that's relative to this shape. Yes, yeah, Because okay. that part there effectively is homologated. Yeah. They're only allowed to change certain bits. He's asked for the screen changes. That's yeah. something he's asked for to make him be able to get in behind it. The handlebar position, that just mimics a couple of things. What people do when they go on track to get more leverage from the bars, yeah. they tend to push them out ever so slightly. And literally a couple of degrees there can transform the way that a bike feels going through a chicane just because you've got more leverage. Yeah, I mean, it, it all makes sense. I guess one question that comes straight off the back of that is, are you now trying to pitch this bike more towards track use than road use? It's always been a great road bike, yeah. and I know it can be made into a great track bike, you know, when you start changing things, but, you know, the, the, the heart and soul of this, you know, the riding position, you're essentially changing to be a bit more sporty. Yeah. I know it's a sports bike, but you're making it more aggressive. It's funny because, you know, if you look at the last 10 years in British Superstock, there have been more Kawasaki ZX-10s raced than any other bike. Yeah. And we've won a lot of championships. Um, and yes, this is designed to go racing and designed to win races in both stock and superbike classes. But that's only a small percentage of who we're selling a bike to, so we need to make it a better all-round road bike. Yeah. And I, the irony is, is a lot of the changes for racing make it a better road bike. Okay, yeah. So that aero package yeah. makes it a more comfortable bike to sit at 70 mile an hour on a motorway. Yeah. The seat makes it a more comfortable um, uh, sort of uh, position to be in. The gearing changes that we've made make it less tall in that first stroke second gear because we've changed the final drive. Yeah. So the acceleration off a roundabout, for instance, is now um, much easier and you're in the fatter part of the torque and the power um, coming off that roundabout at, say, 45 miles an hour. So whilst we've made a good race bike, we've made a better road bike. So I've got to ask yeah. the engine. So it's now your 5 and essentially it's producing the same amount of torque and power as what the last generation UO4 motor did. Trust me, that's no mean feat as well, because yeah. getting it through Euro 5, the bike is strangled. Yeah. If you see the catalytic converter that's underneath there, and when you think that air has got to get out through that to maintain the power that we had with the old bike, with the new bike, is genuinely really difficult. But, but you've managed there. it, yeah. But I guess, that, you know, there's always going to be that question. And the, the mad thing is, you know, we're talking about a, a bike, you know, with, with a claimed 203 brake horsepower. Yeah. Um, you know, when I say, did, did you not aspire to, to get even a couple more brake horsepower? Mm. Uh, I know how ludicrous that sounds, because anything over 200 brake horsepower is, I know yeah. and you know, yeah. that's pretty mental. That's yeah. a brilliant result. But was there no kind of, do you know what, let's have a nibble, let's try and get another three or four? The thing is, is that for us to have the road bike at that power, when you then remove the restrictions that um, we have to comply by to make it an EU5 road bike, yeah. When you remove those, the gains are huge. Yes. Yeah. If we look at, for instance, ZX10RR on a dyno, fully EU5, then we put race kit ECU so we can fuel it in a, in a, a full exhaust system. The jump is huge. Yeah. It's like a, and it sounds like I'm making this number up. It's a 20 horsepower jump. Is it really? These Just are. Just through freeing the engine yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. The, the restriction through um, EU5 is dramatic. I mean, I, I've now ridden both. I mean, on paper, you know, peak power, there's a, a one brake horsepower difference mm. in it in stock trim. Yeah. But there, there are certain things you feel. I mean, there's 500 grams saved, you know, in comparison to the stock motor yeah. and the RRs. And you can feel that even kind of, 
you know, she start feeding that throttle in, there's a bit, you know, it's breathing freer, you know, yeah. it, it wants to get going quicker. And obviously then you've got the other end of it where you've increased the, the revs by another 500 RPM. Mm. And again, you know, I wasn't needing to change gear where I was on the other. It makes, it makes a difference. But, um, but I mean, there's a, there's a huge difference in price, yeah. you know, between this bike here, which is impressive, sub 16,000 pounds, yeah. and kind of you're up at 24 for the RR. Yeah. I mean, how do you justify that? You know, is it? Well, to be fair, it, unfortunately, it's really, really easy to justify it. And it's, I could just show you the parts list for the internals of the engine. Those Pankel Conrods are uber expensive and they're all matched. So the, if you imagine where it splits on the, on the, on the big end, yeah. all of that is completely matched. The piston and the ring and the uh, uh, little end pin, if you like, yeah. piston and pin are matched. It's a single ring. It's all ultra high-tech race componentry. And a piston, in very, very broad numbers, is roughly 10 times the cost of a standard piston. Wow. OK, yeah. you're right, yeah. So I can, I can see where you're going with it, you yeah. know. And, and I guess the other thing is, is probably that those bikes are, are built for racing, aren't they? They're going to be built they for are. track, essentially. Yeah, and you know, you've got three grand's worth of wheels on the RR that yeah. you haven't got on this yes. in the Marchesini wheels. Yeah. Now, the irony with those is they're not dramatically lighter than the standard one, but it's where they carry the weight. And what I um, found when I rode the RR and the R back to back, whilst they're the same similar weight, the way they carry the weight, the way they deliver the power made it feel to me, and you've just been out there so you can either tell me I'm, I'm telling porkies or not, it made the bike feel so much lighter. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's no denying that. It's, it is. Yeah, it's know. the change of direction, the way that when you shut the throttle off and you get on the brakes, instead of having an inertia pushing you forward, there's hardly any inertia there, and therefore it's easier to get on the brakes hard and more controlled. Yeah. No, so, I mean, they're both great packages. Uh, I think I've been probably more pleasantly surprised because we can't really get the... The, the true taste of the RR, yeah. um, you know, I've been pleasantly more surprised by the R, if I'm honest, you know, that's kind of really... We need to mouth. get you out on a super stock spec yeah, RR. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think that would be a hell of an yeah. experience, but it, yeah. it, you know, you, you've got a, a caged Rottweiler there, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. That's the reality of it, whereas this is, yeah, this, this is ticking the boxes for me, I'm enjoying it. I guess, you know, one of the things to just touch on is, is the spec of the tech on this. So yeah. there's more tech now on the ZX-10R than there's ever been. You've got rid of that disco dash, which <laughs> I, I didn't know if you were trying to make people crash for keeping that on there for so many years and blinding them with the lights, but yeah. you've got a nice TFT dash on it. You've got lots more spec and tech, you know, in the electronic suite. Yeah. It's just a case of exploring, okay, you know, Where's that originated from? Is that a KRT thing or is that a road derived direction you've taken? Two, two places really. The dash has been everybody that works over here in Kawasaki UK, Kawasaki Europe, Kawasaki Journey, every single journalist that's ridden one for the last couple yeah. of years saying, please, can we have a TFT dash? Yes. And when we got it, we all screamed from the rooftops because there's two things. You can have a TFT dash, but you can have a nice one. We're lucky we've got a real nice one. We yeah. can change the colours. The information is easy to read. The rev counter is very, very obvious. You know, the, the um, rev change light is really obvious. It's, nothing's ever simple, but it's fairly um, intuitive as far as changing the settings from ride to rain to sport, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, but the thing that genuinely I could sum up the electronics on this is they do it without you having to know they're doing it. This bike now, I think, is the easiest ZX10 we've ever had to ride. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a great package. Um, you know, I've, I've enjoyed it. In fact, we've got a few more sessions coming up, so I'm going to have to shoot now. But I am enjoying it, I should say. Uh, thank you for having me here. Thank you for no answering worries. my questions. I think you've done all right. Did I? Yeah. Did yeah. I pass the test? Uh, <laughs> nearly. But no, seriously, thank you, cracking bike, and it's time to do a bit more. <laughs>